And suppose this right here is not equal to zero. Then can we draw a conclusion that the improper integral, let's say going from zero to infinity of the function diverges? Whenever we're trying to see if the infinite series converges or not, one of the things that we should always do first is the test for divergence, which says the following. If we take the limit as n goes to infinity of a n, and suppose this right here is not equal to zero, then I will tell you congratulations, because we get to draw a conclusion right away that the infinite series as n goes from 1 to infinity of a n, this right here, diverges and done deal. End of story. No more discussion. Let me give you guys an example real quick to illustrate why this is the case. So let's take a n to be n over 2n plus 1. Well, if we take the limit as n goes to infinity of this, which is n over 2n plus 1, then we see that we just have to care about this, care about that. The precalculus way to take the limit, we get just one half. And of course, one half is not equal to zero, and can just say, by test of divergence, the series diverges. But let's take a look why. The series, as n goes from 1 to infinity of that. What does this mean? First, we plug in 1 into the n's, so we get 1 over 3. And next, we plug in 2 into all the n's, so we get 2 over 5. And the next, we plug in 3, we get 3 over 7, and so on, so on, so on. We have infinitely many of them. But you know what? Eventually, all these numbers are going to approach 1 half. So eventually, we'll be adding a lot of 1 halves. How many? Let me tell you. Infinitely many of 1 halves. And again, I put it in quotation marks because, of course, they are not exactly 1 half. They are just about 1 half. Just think about it like that. And when you add up infinitely many 1 half, it will go to infinity. Therefore, this right here is infinity. Therefore, this right here diverges, and then we are done. But of course, earlier we could have stopped right here and just say 1 half is not equal to 0. So we could have just put this down right here and say this right here diverges by test for divergence. Done deal. All right, but this is not the main discussion for this video though, because remember that we also have the integral test. So that shows the connection between an infinite series and an improper integral. Do we have anything similar to this for improper integrals? What do I mean? Well, here's the question for you guys. If today we take the limit as x goes to infinity of some function, and suppose this right here is not equal to zero, then can we draw a conclusion that the improper integral, let's say going from zero to infinity of the function diverges? What do you guys think? Well, there's an integral test that shows the connection between infinite series and proper integral. And um, we have an infinite series version of the test for divergence. So this is similar, so it must be true, right? No, it's not. <laughs> no. And now I would like to give you guys a counter example. And that's how we can show that this statement is actually false. So counter example, the example I have in mind right here is f of x being equal to sine of x squared. And yes, this is a famous one. Check this out first. If we take the limit as x approaching infinity of this function, sine of x squared, well, this right here is actually doesn't exist, right? Because this right here is actually keep going up and down, up and down, up and down. And of course, doesn't exist. It's not the same as zero. But let me tell you, if today we look at the integral going from 0 to infinity of that function, sine of x squared right here, this is the famous first now integral. And in fact, it does converge to a very nice answer. Ready? Square root of pi over 8. Wow. So why is this the case? How is that even possible? Here is the idea. because. When we are talking about functions, this is continuous. And we are talking about the area under the curve when we are talking about infinite integral. So have a look. 
Let's take a look at the graph of sine of x squared. It looks like this, like a parabola first, and then it's going to go up and down like this. And the more you go to the right, you will see that the little space in between is going to get smaller and smaller because of x squared is approaching infinity inside of the sign. And uh, it's just going to go really crazy like this. All right. And of course, we associate integral with the area under the curve. So the first part is this right here. We have the positive value for the integral. And then the next part is this. It has the negative value for the integral. And then you associate this part right here and then take a look right here and so on, so on, so on, right? And then the more you go to the right, you will see that this little part, the width, it's actually going to get so, so, so small. So you don't really have area. So it's kind of like this right here is approaching zero. Likewise, this bottom portion. That's why if you just integrate everything, you actually get a finite value. It's possible. I'm not saying whenever these kind of things happen, you always get convergent. I'm just saying this gives us a chance that we get a finite value, and we did. And this is an example that you see the curve does not have to approach zero, but you see the area it is approaching zero. So that's why we have a hope to get a finite value for the improper integral.